Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at, at protein synthesis, also known as transcription and translation. So first of all, we need to know what a gene is. A gene is a section of DNA that codes for the sequence of amino acids within a polypeptide. Anything underlined here is taken directly from the mark scheme. We need to know these main points. So in order to access this gene to make a copy of it, the first thing that happens is the hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs on my DNA, they need to break. Um, so here are my bases, and don't forget between an A and a T I'll have two hydrogen bonds, between a G and a C I'll have three hydrogen bonds. And the, the enzyme DNA helicase helps to break these hydrogen bonds. So once those bonds have broken and my bases are now exposed, what will then happen is free RNA nucleotides will come and line up along their complementary base pairs. So wherever I've got an A, I'll get a U in my mRNA. So don't forget, RNAs do not have the base T. They only have U instead of that T. Now, this mRNA that's being formed here is going to be a copy of this DNA or coding strand. This sense or coding strand. So once my mRNA free mRNA nucleotides have lined up along the complementary base pairs, I then get the enzyme RNA polymerase that comes along to help to form those three to five phosphodiester bonds between the RNA nucleotides. It helps to form that sugar phosphate backbone. And once that's been formed, I then have my copy of my DNA in my arm mRNA. My mRNA is now formed. Now my mRNA needs to leave the nucleus through the nuclear pore because if my mRNA was to stay within the nucleus, and my protein was to be made inside the nucleus, my protein's too big to fit outside of my nucleus to get through those nuclear pores. So my mRNA needs to leave in, to go into the cytoplasm, which is where the next stage, stage translation occurs. So the mRNA will attach to a ribosome. The ribosome could be made, could be attached to the RUFIR, or it could be free within the cytoplasm of that cell. Now, RNA is made up of two subunits. Uh, made of our RNA, which is another type of RNA we need to be aware of. Once it's attached, the anticodon, which is on the tRNA, so here's the anticodon here on the bottom, it consists of three bases, and this anticodon here is going to be complementary to the codon, which again is three bases on the mRNA, and this codon, this anticodon here is going to be specific to a certain amino acid which it carries with it. So I have a tRNA here which has an anticodon complementary to the codon on the mRNA and another tRNA is going to come along bringing another specific amino acid with it because this anticodon on the tRNA is going to be complementary to the codon on the mRNA and by doing so I'm going to get several tRNAs coming along you can see others here going to come along they're going to have complementary anticodons to the codons on the mRNA and they bring a specific amino acid along with it. Now, these amino acids are going to join together, use, uh, forming a peptide bond. And this sequence of peptide bonds with forming these um, primary structure, so the sequence of amino acids here forming this primary structure helps to give it a certain overall secondary and then tertiary, or maybe even quaternary shape. And that's all we need to know about transcription and translation. Guys, good luck with your exams and all the best.